how do we find out what is the acceleration performance of the vehicle so like i have been telling uh, from the first session there are two different limiting factors whenever acceleration performance of your vehicle is going to be considered so first one is the power that you are going to get <laughs> now this particular uh, presentation is made with respect to a conventional vehicle wherein uh, you have got uh, a engine which is going to provide the power okay so what we need to understand is that uh, this you need to translate or change according to your own vehicle right so for your vehicle instead of the engine it is going to be the combined power of your pedaling as well as uh, the electric motor that is going to help you uh, move your vehicle okay so accordingly you need to calculate uh, the limiting factor with respect to power okay so today's numerical is basically based on the limiting factor considering the power of the engine okay so even if we solve it uh, for a conventional vehicle i just want you to solve it because you will understand how the same thing can be done for an electric or a hybrid vehicle for which you will be doing your calculations okay so i have not been able to get a problem wherein uh, we can find out the acceleration performance with respect to uh, electric motor power and pedaling power okay because those calculations are not uh, available uh, or let us say there with us okay so that's the reason why we'll be doing it for an engine and uh, the later part is for the traction limit which is available on the drive wheel okay so there are two limiting factors the power that you get in some conditions even if you are getting more than enough power if the traction on the wheels is limited so like i told you you take the same vehicle on a tar road uh, or you go it uh, on a gravel so the different different things that are going to happen is because of the traction that you have so if you have less traction you will not be able to use whatever power that you are going to get from the engine or the pedaling and motor that you have to move your vehicle at a faster pace okay so then prevailing limit also depends on what is the vehicle speed okay then if at all you have got low speeds the traction is going to be a limiting factor at high speeds as you move your vehicle uh, at cruising speeds uh, what is going to be a factor is the engine power okay so now the analysis is going to involve the examination of both the engine characteristics as well as how it interacts through the power train okay so even though uh, let us say the engine is generating some amount of power <coughs> sorry there are going to be a lot of power losses which are going to happen uh, as the power is being passed on from the engine till the wheels okay so there are losses in the uh, gear train then there are losses in the transmission losses in the final drive or let us say the differential drive that you have and then finally some losses might happen even at Uh, the rotation of your uh, wheels okay so overall how this loss happens and at the end what is the tractive uh, effort or uh, tractive force that you are going to get to move your vehicle is what uh, we are going to study and we depending sorry depending upon that the acceleration of your vehicle is going to be defined okay so we'll just go ahead if you any doubts like uh, every day uh, you can raise it to chat so whatever chat we do you have either you can visit there or you can put up it on the slide so engine obviously uh, will not go in detail about different characteristics of engine uh, we'll consider or concentrate more on the numerical okay so i'm just going to go through these slides at a bit fast pace so obviously engine is the source of propulsive power and then it is characterized by torque and the power curves okay as a function of speed and these curves they are again going to define what is the overall power that you get at the end of your uh, wheel right so torque curve for gasoline engines they are different with respect to diesel engines and the torque curve is going to peak for the gasoline in the mid range of the operating speeds uh, as well as with respect to a diesel engine it is going to be flatter or sometimes it will rise with decreasing speed so if you see those two curves we are going to compare what happens 
in terms of torque and power for a gasoline engine which is on the left so in this slide you see that particular uh, graph on the left hand side which is over here and then you have got another graph which is on the right hand side for a diesel engine okay so this is the torque curve that you can see so as uh, discussed earlier it is going to be at its highest at medium speeds or mid range speeds of the engine so around 4000 rpm is where you are going to get peak performance for a petrol engine in terms of a diesel engine it might be higher at the lower speeds 1500 rpm or 600 rpm but as you go ahead it is going to drop okay so other major difference is the specific fuel consumption that you have sfc so gasoline engine they achieve the lowest specific fuel consumption in the range of 0.4 pound per hp hour okay so hot for hour uh, again most of these graphs because uh, i have taken them from uh, fundamentals of vehicle dynamics from by gilisti they are in uh, mks units that's why the re, the unit fear also mentioned are in mks so specific consumption or specific fuel consumption is something that you want to be as low as possible okay so lower the sfc more uh, efficiency you want to get or more mileage you want to get so we'll just go ahead we don't want to spend a lot of time here now as far as the power is concerned so from here onwards we want to start with the formula uh, it would be good if you note down the formula if not even in the numerical i have uh, written down those formula so i'll tell you which one particular formula is very important which you need to note down or you can even take a screenshot for you to refer later on so the power is given by torque multiplied by speed and obviously you know the newton's second law of motion so mass times acceleration of the vehicle in your forward direction is going to be the tractive force that you have at the wheels okay so one of the simplest ways by which you can find out what is the tractive force at the drive wheels is if you can know or calculate what is your acceleration you already know the mass uh, which is going to be the mass of your fe cycle uh, along with the mass of the driver and co driver so from that you can calculate the tractive force which is available at the drive wheels okay another way is what we are going to study now uh, going ahead so again if you want to calculate the acceleration if you know the tractive force you can even calculate the acceleration by just dividing the tractive force by the mass and the thing that you have ahead that 550 into ghp per vw that is nothing but conversion of this mks unit into si unit okay so g is nothing but the gravitational constant or acceleration due to gravity v is your velocity now this is again in mks so velocity in feet per second horsepower is the engine horsepower and w is the weight of the vehicle in pounds okay so accordingly you need to convert this in terms of si units it's nothing but tractive force in newton mass is what you have got in kg so from that you can find out your acceleration in meters per second square right now what happens in case of a passenger car or as compared to a heavy truck okay so here you will find that the acceleration with respect to gravity has been plotted uh, on the y axis and you have got speed in miles per hour on the x axis so as the velocity term is in the denominator the acceleration capability must decrease with increasing speed so this is quite common uh, let us say common sense by which you can know that so as you go on increasing your velocity obviously at high speeds you will not be able to accelerate faster so this is nothing but at low speeds you can uh, jump or quickly accelerate your vehicle but as you go to cruising speeds or the highest speeds available for your vehicle uh, the acceleration that you can gain or get from your vehicle is going to be decreasing okay so heavy trucks they have got a lower performance level than cars again this is due to the favorable power to weight ratio that you have so in case of passenger cars they have got a, a very good power to weight ratio uh, in case of trucks it is going to be quite less favorable right so these are the different components uh, of let us say the engine as well as transmission drive train drive shaft differential so if you go ahead from the front part of the engine uh, or the vehicle you have got let us say the front mounted engine so there it is going to provide the power which is torque multiplied by speed 
to propel the vehicle via the drive train after the engine you have got bell housing which is going to contain let us say the clutch or transmission so i guess uh, in case of epi cycle you won't have the engine as well as a bell housing or even a transmission so directly you are going to have a uh, pedal through which or pedals through which you are going to try and move your vehicle which will be directly connected to your uh, drive shaft or the rear axle and then one more uh, power source which is going to be your motor so from motor again you have got a chain drive to rotate your uh, rear axle okay so in this case again you have got engine bell housing followed by transmission again so transmission can be either manual or automatic the transmission again will be connected uh, to the differential gearbox using a drive shaft so drive shaft is going to pass power from the transmission unit to the differential again using two different universal joints at the front and the rear end okay once it is given to the differential the power is going to be uh, transmitted perpendicularly to this particular differential or let us say drive shaft to the axle shafts okay, so you have got two different axle shafts which are going to rotate and they are going to then finally transmit the power to the rear wheels right so i guess for most of the epi cycles you don't have separate axle shaft many of the teams may have may have only one single shaft and that is going to provide the power to the rear wheels right now each of the components that you have inside this particular transmission they are going to have different different efficiencies and depending upon that you are going to get the final torque at the wheels the first equation that you have is the torque which is being delivered to the clutch right so after the engine in the bell housing you have got a clutch and it is going to deliver not the entire torque that is going to get from the engine but some part of it is going to be consumed uh, because of the engine rotational inertia so the torque delivered through clutch is given by the equation pc which is equal to the torque to engine minus ie multiplied by alpha e so these are nothing but the engine inertia losses that we are going to consider so the final torque that you get is the engine from the torque minus engine inertia losses which is at the end of the clutch right so again the next part that you have is output of the transmission so after clutch you have got the transmission box or gear box uh, commonly known as a transmission so the output that you get at the end of this transmission is given by p suffix d okay so the torque which is given to the drive shaft is what uh, the term shown here so the tie sorry the torque to the drive shaft is the torque that you get from the clutch minus the rotational inertia of the transmission multiplied by alpha e so alpha e is nothing but angular uh, acceleration of your uh, engine side and then multiplied by the numerical ratio of the transmission okay so nt is nothing but the numerical ratio of the transmission that you have now again what you need to uh, let's say consider in this case is the inertia of the transmission that you want to calculate it has to be calculated as you see it from the engine side right so let us see you are standing at the front end of the vehicle and from there inertia losses of the clutch is ignored yes right now uh, we'll just go ahead in this flow and i'll tell you uh, at the end what all the total inertia loss is considered so right now it is not being considered so i'll just go back again so this is the torque delivered to the clutch and then you have got torque delivered at the end of the transmission so pc minus inertia losses because of let us say the transmission that you have now this is amplified by the gear ratio of the transmission but again decreased by whatever losses that you have inside the gear and the shaft of your transmission okay so because of friction <coughs> these losses are generally uh, quite high and uh, you may not be able to minimize them to a very high amount but if you are going to have a very good uh, lubricating oil in the gearbox or in the transmission that might uh, help you reduce these losses okay so that is the reason why after every specific interval of time uh, you are supposed to let us say change the engine oil or the transmission oil that you are going to use for uh, smooth functioning of your transmission right next is 
the torque which is delivered to the axles okay so torque to the axles is the tractive force at the ground multiplied by the radius of the wheel the first part so now this is the first equation wherein you have got the tractive force fx okay so this is quite uh, interesting now after this we once we start uh, let us say uh, solving the numericals there you will understand how do we calculate these tractive forces so the first one is tractive force multiplied by the radius of the wheel so okay i think we have got some 10 minutes if the meeting ends i'll just continue again plus the torque delivered to the axles is i w multiplied by alpha w so the rotational inertia of the wheels multiplied by the angular acceleration of the wheels now this is equal to whatever equation that we have seen sort of similar to that equation earlier so cd that is the torque at the drive shaft minus id into alpha d multiplied by nf so nf is nothing but the numerical ratio of the final drive that you want to have right so all these different different values uh, those will be given to you in the problem and then we are going to find out uh, what is the tractive force that it has okay so i hope all the terms in this particular equation are clear so fx is nothing but the tractive force small r is radius of the wheels then you have got iw rotational inertia of the wheels and axle shaft combined alpha w rotational acceleration of the wheels okay and td id and alpha d i have already uh, let us say shared with you id is rotational inertia of the drive shaft alpha d rotational acceleration of the drive shaft and nf is the numerical ratio that you have for the final drive okay so go ahead the relation between the acceleration of the engine transmission and drive line with that of the wheel so alpha d is the angular sorry angular acceleration of your drive line which is equal to nf into alpha w angular acceleration of your wheels and alpha e is the angular acceleration of your engine this is equal to nt numerical ratio of the transmission multiplied by alpha d which is again equal to numerical ratio of transmission nt into nf multiplied by alpha w okay so this equation we are going to use to find out what is the speed of your uh, wheels so just remember this particular equation the last one that you have which is alpha e is equal to nt into nf into alpha w okay so similar equation if you have alpha e or angular acceleration of your engine equal to nt into nf into alpha w you may even write that omega e or omega of your engine is equal to nt into nf into omega w that means angular velocity of the engine is equal to the multiplication of numerical ratio of the transmission multiplied by numerical ratio of the final drive multiplied by the angular velocity of your wheels okay so this particular equation we will use at the end uh, of the numerical today so move on this is the equation i want you to know down uh, which is for the tractive force which is available at the ground so this particular tractive force is generally given by te the torque at engine multiplied by ntf okay so ntf is the multiplication of the numerical ratio of your correct so there is no more doubt numerical ratio is it the gear ratio so that is correct numerical ratio means gear ratio that you have so numerical ratio for the transmission and the numerical ratio for the final drive so torque of engine multiplied by nt into nf divided by r so r is nothing but the radius of your uh, wheels so this is the first term minus okay now the second term is quite big but important as the numerical is going to be concerned so ie rotational inertia of your engine plus it rotational inertia of transmission multiplied by again ntf square so multiplication of let us say the numerical drive for your transmission and the numerical sorry ratio for your final drive plus id uh, inertia of your 
drive or drive shaft multiplied by nf square so the numerical ratio for final drive square of that plus inertia of your wheels okay yeah so i guess many of you are trying to draw something here i request not to do that because this session is also recorded okay fine if any doubts are there you can show up and arrow there so these uh, inefficiencies are due to mechanical and viscous losses viscous losses are the losses which will come into effect because of the interaction of the lubricating oil that you have okay so even if uh, the contact in between two meshing gear teeth okay or tooth so there you are going to have let us say the oil which is going to reduce um, the overall friction between metal to metal contact but the oil itself has some uh, viscosity okay so each layer of the oil which is present that is going to be offering resistance to another layer which is going to slide okay so the those are the viscous losses that you have in the drive line components okay so inefficiencies due to mechanical and these losses they are not uh, considered in this particular case and uh, generally you also have efficiency of 80 to 90% which are characteristic to the drive line of this particular uh, vehicle that we are going to consider okay so then you have can you please explain transmission inertia okay so inertia is nothing but uh, let us say uh, if you try to compare this with the inertia that you have for your own uh, body okay so whenever the vehicle is uh, suddenly going to stop or decelerate or accelerate because of the inertia you are either going to move ahead or move back so inertia of all these mechanical components that you have so for all these calculations so uh, you need to refer uh, what you uh, know as machine design okay so there we have uh formulas to calculate inertia of each of these different different parts okay so rotational inertia of the engine because engine has got lot of rotating components there you will have uh rotational inertia of the engine then again uh, in case of transmission you have got two uh, let us say gears which are going to mesh with each other and then only the power is going to be transmitted uh, in terms of the drive shaft so every component that you have right from the place of location where the power is being generated which is engine till the final uh, point where the power is going to be let us say uh, coming into contact with the road okay so that is the point where you are actually going to uh, use this power to move your vehicle so all these different different parts that you have components that you have in between they are going to have their own losses so this is what we are trying to find out in this particular case so the left hand side term is going to represent a steady state tractive force which is available at the ground to overcome the load forces or road loads so tractive force that you have seen in this term which is on the left hand side of this particular equation this particular equation this one okay so this is the tractive force and this is something which is very important because that is going to help you overcome whatever resistance that you have in case you need to accelerate so it is going to help you accelerate again if you have to climb or go up on an incline so all these uh, are to be negated by the tractive force available and then after all these road loads are overcome whatever excess force that you have okay whatever excess tractive force that you have that is going to help you actually move the vehicle so what you need to understand is only having a tractive force which is equal to whatever load that you have road load so aerodynamic drag then you have got rolling resistance and if you are climbing up on an incline it is the sign uh, component of your weight so you need to make sure that your tractive force is more than all these loads so once you uh, subtract all these loads from a tractive force whatever is available is going to help you move your vehicle ahead or even accelerate your vehicle right so just remember this that's the reason why you need to have more tractive force now the right hand side term in this particular equation they represent what are the different losses of tractive force which can happen due to the inertia of the engine and different different drive right components that you have so does this clear your doubt the transmission inertia that you have talked about Just in one minute, we'll just check what happens after this ends.
now this particular equation we are going to use for solving the numericals that you have and i think one term here is uh, not explained earlier so eta tf it is the combined efficiency of transmission and final drive so in the numerical that we solve you will be given uh, efficiency of your transmission and efficiency of your final drive so to find out the combined efficiency you just need to multiply both these terms okay and then uh, you can find out what is the combined efficiency so so any other doubt that you have till now